and got it all set up. And we are live. So this is the weird part, talking when there's no really, you know, the invisible crowd. Um, so today we're talking about making your own food safe molds. Um, I cannot tell you how many times I've gone and like I needed a mold, but I couldn't find it. And then like all I need are molds of different pills, pills. What we're gonna do is create mold putty and put a whole bunch of Tylenol and a leave and aspirin in there and make my pills. And then I can roll my fondant or my modeling chocolate right into it and then pop them out. Um, for this particular cake, I also needed a pill bottle, and that's a little more challenging because I needed to get it wrapped around a cylinder and be able to get the chocolate cylinder back out. So that's what this mold putty's for. And then these two are intended for pressing your objects in two to get the shape and the dimension and the quality. So everybody say hi to Kristen. She's joining us today. Hi. And I'm flipping over here. So I have Easy Mold Silicone Paste. This is the brush on. I have the amazing Mold Putty, which is definitely FDA approved for food products. Um, this is the yellow stuff. And then the last one I have is the Easy Mold Silicone Putty. Different brand, but essentially the same thing. It comes in a pretty purple instead of yellow. Did you bring any goodies with you to uh, play with? Ah, well, we'll play with seashells today. Um, the fun stuff, I think probably the most fun for me has always been this mold putty. So we're going to open this one up. It's the easiest one to use, too. They both are a part A, part B. The putties are a part A, part B. And you mix them together until they form a homogenous yellow color and then you have about five minutes of working time. That's it. So I use less than what I need. And then it takes about 20 minutes to cure and it's ready to pop your stuff out and you can use it right away. So you can see we've got yellow and white. Mm -hmm. oh. and that keeps cutting out. I've got a short somewhere between here and the TV, but it looks like we're recording on the Black Magic design. So it looks like everything is there. Keeps going video detected, video not detected. <laughs> joy, joy. All right. So you can use forms to build your mold. Oh yeah, key's a great idea. Um, you can use like circle cookie cutters to make like perfectly round ones like this guy. Or you can just go for it and roll out a piece of putty and press, which most of mine end up being yeah. that, just rolled out. Um, and I also, you're, it's possible to roll a blob of putty and press objects into. So that's essentially what I did with that one, was create a ball and then I used the um, cap of a medicine bottle and put inside. So I'm just gonna make a really small one here. The trick is definitely getting two equal size balls of the putty. And you can weigh it out if you want to to be as precise as possible, but it really doesn't matter too much as long as you get close to equal amounts. Pass this over to you. And then we take the white and the gold and begin molding it together and kneading it as quick as possible because again, you have approximately three to five minutes to get this part together before it starts hardening. And I'm just shooting for a homogenous yellow. But if I see streaks of white, that's always going to stay slightly soft. Even if I'm attempting to make a mold, like you'll find it flake off. So now I have that fairly homogenous, homogenous, my new word, homogenous. So I'm gonna roll that into a ball Look for the side that has the least amount of seams. And then I'm gonna roll it to a thickness that works for me. And it depends on what I'm doing. So like these were just the earrings, so I could use a really thin piece. The seashells, I'm gonna need a little more depth to get the dimension. So I'm just rolling that out into something that works for me. And then 
I like to place, if I'm doing multiples, I like to place multiple objects on first so I can see where fit should be, mm -hmm. and then press. Press to the depth that you want. And I can actually push that section toward that seashell. If I feel like I've hit the bottom, which I think I got really close, this could be really thin, and actually I have gotten really thin. So I'd wanna make sure I don't pop that when I'm pulling out the piece. And that's all there is to it. Basically press the piece in, let it sit for 20 minutes, it cures, you pop it back out. And then you have a wonderful mold that you can use over and over for making 200 pills for a medicine cake or the uh, seashells for a new mermaid cake. And the great thing about that is you can find seashells that you like, like the size-wise. Um, right now, most of the molds on the market are really large seashells. Well, if you wanted some variety, you would want some small ones. So just pull your seashell collection, find your favorites, press into the mold, and voila. I also really like how much depth you can get. Um, this was from a just a, a resin rose mold. And once pressed into the putty, I can get fondant, gum paste, chocolate to come out with all of this detail. We also did the same thing with a uh, cameo, which I love. Yeah. That's cool. So now you have a key. You can pour chocolate into it, or you do yeah. <laughs> chocolate fondant, gum paste, you name it. You can put it inside that mold, um, FDA approved. And that is the simplest way for me to make molds for my cakes. I also make impression mats. So if you need something kind of different for your um, uh, the sides of cakes, you can always do impression mats from found objects. This one actually, this is from Shelf Liner. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, cool texture. I want that. Um, I've done really cool papers from the scrapbooking departments. Um, get some nice stiff papers, roll out a thin piece, and then put your paper on top and roll it, and you get the same pattern. So it works great for recreating impression mats that you wouldn't want, you know, especially if you only need it once. Mm -hmm. um, this is a lot less expensive than buying, yeah, if you're only going to get to use it once. Or if you're trying to make something unique and you can't find it on the market. Um, any questions on amazing mold putty? So when you use it, you're obviously going to take out this dirty old piece. How do I clean it so that when I put stuff in it? You're just going to clean it in normal dish detergent, like good old Dawn dish detergent in uh, hot water. And this putty is good up to 400 degrees. Let's see. I know you can put um, you can put isomalt in it if you want in glass look Ooh. pieces. Oh, yeah. I want to say it's 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I can't tell for sure. I'm going to pull out the directions and find out. Mix ratio, one to one. Open time, three minutes. Demold time, 15 minutes later. Intended especially for food grade applications. Oh, I, I forgot. You can do um, gelatin. You can also make your own ice molds. For your next cold drink, yeah. Make little uh huh. Or even have a key. Like a key would be cool if you're doing. Um, let's see. Of course, if you're using food products in your molds, you only want to use food products. Don't switch to something that might be unsafe. You might not get it washed thoroughly. And you can make this cure faster by putting it in a low temp oven, 125 degrees is what they say. So basically you turn your oven on, turn it back off, 
and let the residual heat cure this for you a little bit faster. So if you're in a hurry, like I always am, <laughs> you can knock it out faster. Um, you know, this one doesn't tell me how high the heat can be, but I know you're safe up to 400 degrees, which is the isomalt. Isomalt safe. The other one, um, I started using it when I needed cylinders or like mini champagne glasses. So I would buy the plastic champagne glass and then I would coat it in the easy mold. Mm -hmm. This one's a little bit messier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it is also a part A and a part B. And when you blend them together with a putty knife, you then just adhere it to all sides of whatever you're trying to mold. And for cylinders, once it has cured, you'll have to take a sharp razor blade and come down about two thirds of the way so that in the future you can unmold your items without breaking them. Um, the thicker you can get this, the stronger and sturdier it'll be. Um, I kind of wish I had put another uh, layer on this so that it would hold together better. But we use this by taking a rubber band and just holding the pieces together. And then we poured our chocolate inside, let the chocolate set up. We dumped out most of it so we could get a hollow. Mm -hmm. So chocolate in, chocolate out, create a chocolate shell, and then gently unmold it. Mm -hmm. And then we would turn it seam side down on the cake and then fill it with all of the candy, candy pills, yeah. <laughs> and then we also had our cap. So we created our cap and had that setting on the side as well. So this one, I don't really have anything cylindrical to play with today. <laughs> I will say this one takes longer to set up. So once you wrap it on, once you, oh, a Purell bottle. Uh, once you put it on, you, you have to wait at least an hour. Okay, no, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to wait that long. So that's one of the things I like about mold putty. It's instant yeah, gratification. Sure. Yeah. And actually at this point, you like, I can already tell it's starting to firm up a bit. And the warmer the room is, the more, the quicker this will happen. Mm -hmm. And then once this has cured for uh, 25 minutes or so, the shells and the key will naturally pop out. So it'll be really easy to take out. Some items that might have a little more porous surface, you can get an, like an acrylic spray to spray over the top of it. That way, the surface is more smooth before you put it in the mold, and you have easier release, basically. It's a release agent. Um, and I might do that if I'm doing some porous paper, just kind of shellac the top, mm -hmm. and then press it into my mold so I can keep all of the texture um, with a really thin layer of acrylic to seal it without the risk of having this embed in the finer pieces, finer particles. So that's it for mud putty, mud putty, ha <laughs> ha, mold putty. So you can pretty much use anything to create objects that you can reproduce over and over and over in cake. What else can I play with? I'm like dying to pull stuff out and make more molds. Dying. I know, it's like, what do I want to, what do I want to press in there? What do I want to press in there? Yeah, charms are always lots of fun. Why? Um, I don't even think I have anything in my goodie box. Buttons are fun. I have nothing, nothing else to play with. But this is what I use for that texture. Oh, you want to try a little baby I texture mat? That. Yeah. So guys, this is literally just shelf liner. Uh-huh, you wanna try one? Yeah. Yeah. Some things that I've used this for, um, bottle caps. So I would make my own, like I used Simi Cakes bottle mold, but then I needed a really cool bottle cap. So for me, it was easier to create a mold for it and place on top. Seashells are irregular. Grecian columns. Man, I looked everywhere for a Grecian column that I needed a specific size, but I could only find them in plastic. 
Um, so I did. I grabbed a plastic one and used a cylindrical technique and basically painted the Grecian columns and then released the Grecian columns and I would pour my chocolate into it. And give it a good press with a roller. Yeah. Make sure you get like super texture. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So just a paring knife and trim it off. And you can do the same thing. Like if you're creating, if you're creating several of these and you want them all to be precise, and you're not using a uh, ring mold or a cookie cutter to create that specific ring. You can just create yourself a template and slice, slice, slice off all the extra edges. But then this stuff is already activated, so yeah. you can use it for yep. something. Yep. So you have a couple of minutes that you can peel it off and then turn around and make it like a mini mold. But what I find is after three minutes, it doesn't really want to smash back together very well. So that's how easy the molds are. I've got FDA approved food putties by either Easy Mold Brand or the Amazing Mold Putty. Yeah, once once you once you put it together, it doesn't you know like three minutes. And then I also have the silicone paste that we use to cover cylindrical items that we would then split open to remove our items once we've created a chocolate shell. Any questions? No, that's it. Yeah, it's so easy. Uh, no questions online yet. I wonder if I can unmold this yet. Oh, I didn't mention um, like using saran wrap as your surface to prevent sticking to your tabletops or um, paper products. Saran wrap makes a great back holder. That's it. Thanks for joining. That was fast. Yeah, I know. I'm going to let you continue playing with that, though. Um, I don't know what we could find, but I'm going to browse around in the back room and see what kind of cool objects I can yeah, find. Key. I yeah. Key, so you collect keys. Yeah, so I can never find key key molds, so anytime I do a live on it, uh -huh. I can put it down. That's right. I have some Mondo keys back there. They go industrial keys. All right, so I'm going to say goodbye for now and play around, and we'll uh, catch you next Friday at noon, right? Mm -hmm. I don't remember what I'm doing next Friday at noon, do you? That's right. 
It's something fun and interesting. Cool beans. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Do 